Today, Bitcoin retreats back below $70,000. Binance's new CEO says the crypto company has now moved into, quote, greater maturity after paying that multi-billion dollar fine. And Danelle Dixon, CEO of Stellar, discusses the latest on the rollout of smart contracts to its blockchain. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Talia Kaplan. Crypto prices in the red this morning, with Bitcoin falling back below the $70,000 level. As of noon Eastern, the cryptocurrency fell 3.5% to $69,229. Ether dipped nearly 3% to the $3,500 level, and Polygon's Matic token dropped more than 3% to $0.91. Cents. Now, the drop in prices come one day after a Deutsche Bank survey revealed that consumers are becoming a little less skeptical about Bitcoin. Although, just under a third of those questioned still expect the cryptocurrency's price will fall sharply by the end of this year. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. CNBC's Arjun Karpal is at Paris Blockchain Week, where he caught up with Binance's new CEO. Richard Tang took over after Shengpeng Zhao pleaded guilty to violating the Bank Secrecy Act back in November. The company itself had to pay a $4.3 billion fine to the U.S. government. Tang says Binance has now matured past its cultural issues. And it's important to look forward, to move on, to build on a very important franchise. Right? So we have commenced uh, that building process in terms of investing heavily in our compliance program for the past two and a half, three years. Right? So it didn't take place overnight. So in 2022, we have invested about 258 million US dollars in terms of our compliance program. Last year, that figure went up to 213 million, right? So you can see the amount of investments. We continue to recruit the best talent out there possible to help us push the agenda forward. While attending Paris Blockchain Week, Arjun also spoke with some of the issuers behind the spot Bitcoin ETFs that hit US markets back in January. They expressed doubts that spot Ether ETFs would win approval from the SEC. Venek is one of the first in line for a final decision in May, and its CEO told CNBC he thinks the application would probably be rejected by the SEC. Now you can read that full story over at CNBC.com. Next, Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, Wally Adeyemo, warned of terrorist groups and other, quote, malign actors turning to crypto to try and circumvent sanctions. In testimony before the Senate Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs Committee today, Adiemo said that the department fears these groups will increase their use of digital assets without congressional action. He warned that groups like Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and state actors like Russia as well as North Korea were finding new ways to hide their identities and move resources using crypto. Adiemo said the department had shown some success in rooting out illicit finance in the digital ecosystem, but that the U.S. needed to expand enforcement to prevent these activities. He urged Congress to pass legislation, which he recommended should include secondary sanctions targeted at foreign digital asset providers that facilitate illicit finance. All right, for our main story, last month, Layer 1 Blockchain Stellar launched its Soroban update aimed at bringing smart contracts to the network. Crypto World's Jordan Smith spoke with Danelle Dixon, CEO and Executive Director of Stellar, about how that upgrade is going. Danelle, thank you so much for being here. We're just a few weeks into the launch of Sorbin, Stellar's smart contracts platform. I explain this update to Stellar's network for people who are unfamiliar and, and also how it's going so far. Yeah, that, hands down, this is the biggest thing that's happened on Stellar since its inception. Uh, you know, Stellar has uh, an awesome payments network and um, a really robust uh, practice with respect to being able to send and receive value very uh, inexpensively, securely. And um, they, there are over 15 billion operations on the network, but there wasn't a smart contract platform. So there wasn't this space where developers could come and just sort of build what they wanted to build and how they wanted to build it. And so we really wanted to create that greenfield space for builders to be able to do that. And so we did that. And it's been about two weeks that Soroban's been live. And it's been pretty awesome to see, not just even beforehand, we had Testnet where folks were already building. We had 190 projects building there that are moving over to mainnet. Um, but just to see even at the inception of um, since March, since our, since we brought it, uh, since we brought it live, we've seen like really, really important financial building blocks like automated market makers. We've seen lending and borrowing protocols already come. We've seen data access tools like oracles. And then the reverse of that, so indexers that are looking at data on the, on, the, on the network. And then, of course, like a really, really important part for us is the tooling support and infrastructure 
like security audit firms and block explorers. Those are really important to be able to show the robustness of uh, Sorbonne. So it's been really fun to see all these different players, these new players come to Stellar. And it's, uh, you know, it, we weren't the first, but I certainly think it's the best. Can you talk a little bit about the speed of adoption? You know, there's the Sorbonne Adoption Fund, which is investing $100 million into projects using the smart contracts platform. Talk about the speed of development on the network, especially as we just had this period of crypto winter where it was all about, you know, heads down and, and build. What does that look like on Stellar? Yeah, well, so, I mean, we, during that period, so Stellar has always been really focused on the real world use cases and really focused on, in, and we've seen like a huge adoption of real world assets on the network. So you see Franklin Templeton and Wisdom Tree and other players out there that are bringing their assets to the network for good reason, because it's a very secure network for them to be able to do that on. And they they like the tech the tech stack that's there, and they've been able to leverage a lot of the, the compliance tools for it from a real world asset standpoint. So we've seen really fascinating adoption just on uh, what we used to call classic Stellar, but really, which is just the payments platform for Stellar. And now with Sorbon, we see the opportunity to kind of have everyday financial services. And so we were really excited about all the different participants that came. It's Sorbon is built with Rust and Wasm. So we're, we're really leveraging communities that already exist. It's not new languages that you needed to learn to be able to build on Sorbon. And so we have these really great tools that are already on the network that have just spent a bunch of time. You know, it took us about a year and a half to two years to be able to get Sorabon live. But during that time, we had developers pull all the way through with us. And so to have them now move to mainnet has been pretty great. So the adoption of the Stellar network has been pretty remarkable. I've been here for five years now, and it's just been, we went from, uh, you know, when I first started, we hadn't yet even reached a billion operations on the network, and now we're doing a billion operations a month. Um, and so it's a pretty remarkable dif dif difference just over that time period. And now with Sorabon, it's just going to be supercharged. What, what does competition look like for Stellar? Are you focused on the Solanas and Polygons and Ethereums, or are you really focused more on, on TradFi as competition and bringing a new wave of, of finance or of tokenization? That's such a great question. When you think about TradFi, I think about TradFi as an opportunity for them to be able to use this really amazing technology. So I think about us enhancing and them enhancing. The, the, the enhancement goes both ways in terms of using blockchain to enhance what they've built, but also that we get to be able to bring these really wonderful assets to participants that may not have before had access to it. And so that's the promise and the value of blockchain. Um, so I don't think of like TradFi as necessarily competition. I think them of them as like a user of this tech stack to be able to make it and to really bring it to market in a fascinating way. Uh, in terms of the the chains that are out there, certainly I look at Solana as competition for Stellar, but I, I actually really rejoice in the notion of competition. You know, Stellar is a network where you can always see that there is there are there are problems that are being solved by developers all over the world that are real problems that are challenges that are put forth by local users that they want to be able to solve and developers can use this global public network to be able to do that so if you want to actually see where humans are engaging with blockchain in a way that was the the original inception of blockchain which was it was going to make it so that the world was sort of globalless and that users who didn't actually have bank accounts or credit cards and didn't have access to that, to those everyday financial services, could gain that access through blockchain. Then you got to look on Stellar because that is where everyday financial services are happening. There are lots of other benefits on other chains, um, but the, the truth of the matter is the on and off ramps, all the things that are important and necessary to be able to bring this technology to humans there, it's available on Stellar. And that's not the case for other chains. So I think that everybody's got sort of their own thing that they're focused on. We have always been heads down, focused on delivering this kind of value, and we're going to continue to do that. You, you talked about how a lot of tradi traditional financial partners, uh, are, or you want a lot of traditional financial partners. Uh, and one of the things that they're really beholden to are, are regulations. And it seems like they, mm -hmm. they are still unsure of where the regulation stands for a lot of the crypto industry. Um, how are you thinking about regulation for your platform and for, for building this technology with TradFi? Yeah, so that's a great question. I think compliance is such an important piece of it. And so regulators are going to want to see compliance tools. Those are built into Stellar. So from the that's been something that those the, the developers in the ecosystem around Stellar have focused on from the early days is really putting those compliant the compliance tools in play so that, that, that it could be leveraged by regulated financial uh, institutions. 
I think the policy around this, particularly in the U.S., is complicated. I mean, I've been advocating for and really pushing for stablecoin legislation in the U.S. for probably two and a half years now. And I thought it was low-hanging fruit, and we haven't actually seen it come to fruition yet, although I'm still hopeful that it will this year before the summer. Uh, So I think that it's really just understanding the regulatory environment, making sure that blockchain is not actually looked at as different or unique because it is just the tech stack. It is the tech stack that traditional financial institutions can leverage to be able to bring their products and services to end users and businesses. And so we can't, we, we have done ourselves a bit of a disservice by focusing so much on the technology and not on the outcome um, as an industry. And really what we're trying to do now is what is the outcome that you're trying to regulate? What is the focus that you're trying to get to and protect against? Don't think about the tech stack because that's, that's somewhat irrelevant to the outcome uh, so long as the tech stack is actually driving that value. So we're really trying to think and, t- and work with regulators from that standpoint instead of from the, like, let's break down every piece of blockchain technology, because, you know, we didn't do that back in the days of the early days of the web. That's how we were able to get them, be able to manipulate and leverage all the different technologies that the web offered. And we need to be able to let that flourish while we're still focusing on the outcomes that we want to protect against from a regulatory standpoint. Final question for me, what's next for Stellar this year? What are you most excited about for your business? Oh, well, I'm I'm just really, really excited about Sorbon and really seeing that um, that ecosystem grow and grow and flourish. I think that it is, uh, you know, the, the adoption fund is something that we think that we're going to spend a bunch of time and energy on and really bringing different uh, protocols and um, and companies to Sorbon. Um, but mostly, I just think that this is going to drive so much opportunity for everyday financial services and to be able to bring those to users and consumers all over the world that don't actually have the same access that folks do in, in, uh, in the more in the Western countries. So I'm just really excited about that. And I think that this is going to be um, quite a year for Stellar and, um, and for the ecosystem at large. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.